today we're here with Liam Banks, founder of LB3 Lacrosse and MVP at the 2000 National Championship game for Syracuse University. So can you just tell us a little bit about how you came to play at Syracuse? Well, you know, I, uh, I got lucky. I, uh, I got a phone call one day from Syracuse University my senior year, which is kind of crazy with the amount of uh, early recruiting that goes on now right. uh, in the position you're probably in with your recruiting. Uh, it wasn't until my senior year that, that I got a call from them, and uh, they came down to watch me play twice. And, you know, I think one game I had 9-1, and one, and the other game I had 1-9. and nine. So uh, I think they figured out that I was a versatile player. Uh, went to a great high school, Ward Melville High School. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, the tradition of Syracuse University, the education I was going to get up there, uh, the ability to be about five hours from home, depending on traffic, you know, getting onto Long Island, uh, that was important to me. I wanted to be close to my family. All right, so can you tell us your biggest highlight and best memory while playing at Syracuse? Well, a lot of people, you know, ask me that question. Uh, what was your, your, your biggest highlight or your favorite moment? Um, you know, if, if I think about a favorite moment, it, it was definitely in 2000, uh, winning the national championship and accomplishing a lot of the goals that, that I had that year. You know, first being uh, for the team winning a national championship after losing in 1999. You know, that was my number one goal. Uh, becoming an All-American uh, that year w was one of my goals, and I worked extremely hard uh, to get there. And then, you know, finally I kind of overachieved on my goals, and I wound up being the MVP of the national championship that year. And, and that team was really special towards me. Um, I don't think it was the most talented team that I played at when I was at Syracuse, but we had something special. And when you create a team and you have something special and you get along and it, everybody knows their roles, that's where you, you find the success. But uh, you know, outside of that, my one favorite moment uh, of being at Syracuse had nothing to do with a goal or an assist. Uh, uh, I had a hit on the Virginia goalie, uh, one of my good friends, Tillman Johnson, and um, the way that the crowd erupted uh, that day um, you know, it helped build almost a fan base that you had this guy who was 5'10 and 145 pounds willing to sacrifice his body uh, for the, the betterment of the team. But I can remember, you know, Tillman running down the field and turning around to grab the ball. And, and it's not like he was running me full speed. I, you know, he was a little bit off balance, but I ran him over and I got up in front of him and, and I said, welcome to the House of Pain. And that's what Syracuse was, a carrier dome. It was a house of pain. People didn't want to play there. Um, when we were there, we were confident, and uh, that kind of set the tone for that game and, and set the tone for the year. And uh, we went on, uh, moved on to have a, a great year, and uh, you know, it's one of my, my favorite moments. And when I see Tillman, we, we, we laugh about it because, you know, uh, same thing. He probably thinks about some of the times that he stuffed me as well. So, uh, but that was my, my favorite moment of, of being an Orange man. And, you know, the, the other moment, I guess, would be the first time I stepped on the field there. Uh, going from high school where I started every game for, uh, you know, four or five years on, on my varsity program through Little League where, you know, I was a starter. Uh, there was a moment when I got to Syracuse when I wasn't a starter and I had to work extremely hard. And I remember it like it was yesterday against Princeton when um, they put me on for, for man down um, and to be a ball carrier. And I remember we killed the penalty and they're saying, Banks, Banks, come, come, come. And uh, for that moment, I pretended like I was deaf. <laughs> and uh, I got on the far side of the field, so, that, so they pretended they couldn't hear me. I got the ball, and I said, this is my chance, and, and made a move, had an assist, and, and wound up uh, playing uh, the rest of the game and, and getting an opportunity, and they were making calls in, in overtime uh, that I was involved in. We wound up winning that game. I think it was a 15-14 uh, game, but you know, I remember at that point, I knew that uh, my coaches were confident in what I, w what I was doing on the field, and it gave me the confidence to uh, ultimately go out and make a difference for my team. Those are some pretty awesome stories. Um, can you let us know how going to college at Syracuse sort of set you up for what you've been doing since uh, you graduated? Yeah, I mean, uh, for me, you know, I came from a big family of, uh, of eight kids in my family, and my father always had talked about being a hard worker and and gave me this uh, identity of family first. And that's why Syracuse University was so perfect for me. Roy Simmons Jr., who is the old coach from Syracuse University, there's only been four in the history of Syracuse University, he instilled this idea of family first. And when I got to Syracuse, John Desco, the head coach there, you know, he played at Syracuse. He had coached with Coach Simmons. He, he uh, you know, he also instilled those same type of things about Syracuse family and and uh, you know I made so many great relationships that I was there when I got done uh, with with Syracuse I knew I wanted to be in the lacrosse industry but I knew whatever 
I was going to accomplish in life, it had to have that same mentality of being a part of a family. And, and I think that's what, you know, we have now with my LB3 program is we try and try and, uh, uh, relate that to our families that we're all one, uh, we're all out here to uh, accomplish things together. Um, highs, lows, we're there for each other uh, and you play for me and, and, and you know each time we talk about head, heart, hustle, the stuff that I talked about at Syracuse University. We talk about doing your job for the team and, and that's what a family does when, the, when they operate. Everybody has their roles, mom, dad, brother, sister, and if everybody plays into those roles uh, you wind up you wind up being successful and happy and loving and all those different things so you know from my parents to Syracuse to what I do now uh, it's a really important part uh, of making sure people feel welcome um, go out of your way to help others and and you know have, have you know, in a sense of love for for all that are involved with what you do oh yeah I love playing for LB3 it's such a tight-knit group of guys all right, so can you just tell me a little bit more about what LB3 is and the type of stuff you guys try to accomplish? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, for us, uh, first LB3 stands for Liam Banks and number three, which was my number one I was at Syracuse University. But, uh, you know, our, our program, we do a couple different things. We obviously do club teams, uh, camps, clinics, leagues. A uh, big initiative for us has been bringing big-time college lacrosse uh, down to down to Georgia, uh, which we've we've accomplished in the past couple of years. Uh, now we do that under a company called College Lacrosse Productions. Uh, this year we got Hobart and Siena and. Duke versus Denver and Notre Dame versus Georgetown and Northwestern versus Virginia women's and what you know my goal with LB3 is to give kids the opportunity that I had when I was younger uh, in terms of getting high quality coaching uh, getting lots of reps following our LB3 curriculum but teaching the game you know that's the most important part for me there's a ton of club programs out there and people try and figure out how we separate ourselves from those programs and what we do is we coach you've been in our practices it, it is very efficient it is run is developed on stick skills uh, we bring our kids up to the top recruiting events in the country we've had a lot of success last year we had 30 kids just from Atlanta move on to go play division one division two or division three lacrosse and you know kind of our message is your child comes to play for us by the time they're done with us they're going to be a better player we're not going to promise what college you're going to go to we're not going to say oh you're going to get a scholarship for us our success is based on are they a better lacrosse player are they a better person when they leave? And, and we've had a great success. You know, Nate Solomon up at Syracuse University and Tyler Wilkes up at Providence and, and a guy like Cal Swanson who's at St. John's. I mean, these kids are all getting great educations. And uh, if we can be a vehicle to help them improve as lacrosse players, they take care of their grades and the other things involved and have the opportunities, then we're successful. Uh, another part of, of what we do is, is um, you know, trying to support the, the uh, professional franchises that are here in town, uh, whether it's a swarm in the indoor or the Atlanta Blaze in the outdoor. Uh, it's an exciting time, and, and those are the things that are important for, for the growth of the game. And since I've been down here uh, eight years, I've seen an incredible, incredible amount of, of growth, both on the boys' and the girls' side. And, you know, I do think it has a lot to do with, uh, you know, the, the investment that I've made, both uh, uh, time-wise uh, and financially-wise, to continue to bring down coaches to try and raise the level of lacrosse. And there's a lot of other guys like me uh, in the Atlanta area who have done the same type of thing uh, to bring up the level of lacrosse. But, you know, what we love to do is we love to teach, and we think we do it really well. And and uh, if we continue to do that and, and follow our, our mission statement to inspire, educate, innovate, and enhance all things lacrosse, then I think that uh, we're going to continue to turn out really good players and really good young men and women uh, who can make a difference in this world. And, and that's what it's about at the end of the day. Right. That's awesome success. I'm pretty sure the first time, my first introduction to lacrosse was an LB3 camp run over at Newtown Park by my house. And I just got chills thinking about that between, you know, your your older brother, um, you know, when I'm getting chills thinking about this, your older brother, I remember he was a, a sophomore and he didn't make our elite team. And uh, I called up your parents and I said, hey, listen, he's got something, but he's just not there yet. And here's a spot that he's going to be able to improve. And, and your parents believed in me, like a lot of other parents believed in me. And, and look where he is now. He's at Mercer. And, 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 and you, um, you know, the way that you hustle and grind, I mean, your improvement over the last 
last year has been astronomical in my mind and and you're brilliant and smart and you're gonna have the opportunities to to move on and play in college and do do great things in this world and then your your brother Caleb so being able to make a difference in families like the Sods is something I take a lot of pride in and uh, you know I think about often when when I'm reflecting on on you know what my legacy at some point uh, is going to be and I hope that when I look back that you know you're a lawyer or you're running a communications department for NBC or ESPN and, and who knows and, and hopefully when you look back on it you say I had a guy coach Banks or coach Ratliff or coach Wallace who really made a positive impact on my life and and that's more valuable than than any money or, or any riches or whatnot that are out there. All right. All right, awesome thank you so much for doing the interview. No problem at all. We'll take a